Welcome back. 844 in today's College 101. We're taking a closer look at what students need once college gets back in session this fall. And whether you're paying for books, classes, or a back-to-school wardrobe, you will want to budget for some savvy financial planning and credit management. Christiana Bridges is the author of the bestseller, What You Need to Know About Credit and Co-Signing. Also, Your First Step to Credit Restoration, and He Jacked Up My Credit. <laughs> she joins us now in our studio. Chris, thank you for being here. Thank you very much for having me. This most recent book is part of a series, uh, and uh, there's another one coming out later this fall. Absolutely. What you need to know about credit and bankruptcy. Um, I'm addressing a lot of the financial hardship areas that affect people, and not only the hardship itself, but how it affects their credit. Mm -hmm. And I want people to understand that we might have a life challenge that affects our credit, but we can restore after that life challenge. And so I'm putting out these practical guides just Very to good. help people kind of get through the, the tough seasons in their life. Well, let's talk about this tough season, uh, going to college. Uh, it, it presents uh, many opportunities, uh, but it also presents some dangers in terms of how you handle your finances, uh, uh, not falling into great debt, and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And that's something that more and more students uh, are doing, uh, going into debt. Absolutely. You know, unfortunately, the numbers are rising. 38% of college students have to come out of school because of financial hardships. Mm. And what I found is 84% of those students say if they had had any type of financial education before they got to school, it would have been more valuable for them to know how to manage their debt. So we're sending our kids to school with really no educational information about how to manage their finances. And so when they get to school, of course, they get teased by the credit card offers and all of this yeah. and then they don't know what to do with it so to them it's free money because they don't understand that money doesn't grow on trees and plastic is not free right <laughs> so let's uh, let's address that first because you know uh, their credit the credit card companies are right on campus uh, uh, pitching to the students and uh, it's very I won't say it's easy but it's relatively easy to uh, put in an application and get you know a credit card for whatever they absolutely is. and the card reform that was passed in 2009 and then it was reformed, actually the CARD Act and reformed in 2010, was supposed to address that. Mm -hmm. It basically said now that students have to prove that they have the right income or they have to have a co-signer if they're under 21. The problem is, just like anything, we pass great law, um, but it takes a bit for things to get implemented mm -hmm. and there is always workarounds, right? Mm -hmm. So most college students on campus as a freshman their first week, they don't have a job. Right. And so we know that that's, unfortunately, though, they are still solicited. Um, and so, you know, they don't know. They get a T-shirt or a hat, <laughs> you know, and they think, or, or a box of pizza, you know, mm -hmm. and in, in turn, they get a credit card. So bottom line, uh, and I, I suppose the answer varies case by case, but should a college student apply for a credit card on campus and get a credit card? You know, my answer would be no, unless they've already had information and education before they got to campus. And, and that raises me, I think parents, quite frankly, should be preparing for college at birth as mm -hmm. far as putting money aside for savings. Mm -hmm. But during high school time is when you start to teach your children about financial management um, and ex ex you know introducing them to credit management. So when they get to school, first of all, they may have already started establishing credit mm -hmm. to be an authorized user or some other type of um, strategy. But most importantly, when they get confronted with that credit card offer, they have the open dialogue to come back and talk with their parents about it because unfortunately most kids will you know accept the credit card offer mm -hmm. run out and treat everyone to dinner mm -hmm. right and run up a bunch of debt and then they're they don't communicate with their parents until it's too late some so. parents i've heard about some parents giving uh, their kids as they go to college a debit card because they feel well at least i can manage the amount of money that's available and all that kind of thing is that a good idea because the the, the criticism i hear is that uh, the stu still, it's, there's kind of a disconnect. It, it's not actual money. It's very easy to drain that pretty quickly. Right. Well, a debit, that type of card, a prepaid card, is, e is a good way to get started. Mm -hmm. It doesn't help them build credit, though, so that's a different conversation. Sure. However, you've got to start somewhere teaching your children the responsibility of, if I use this credit card, there will be a bill, and I'm going to be expected to pay at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. And that'll, of course, carry them into good financial and credit management as they become adults. So I believe that it is a great place to start. You have to know your children. I have two children that have gone through college and, I'm, and I manage that process with them differently mm -hmm. depending on 
their level of responsibility, quite sure, frankly. Sure. And, um, and so I do believe that, you know, you have to know your children, but it's a great place to start. And it is the parents' responsibility to start doing that. And you say during high school is the best time to do it. Absolutely. All Absolutely. Right. And for the students themselves, uh, uh, when, when, they get in, when they get to college and, you know, this process begins, what is the key thing for them to keep in mind? Well, if they do get in, you know, if they do establish the credit card, and it's not a bad thing, again, if mm -hmm. you do it with knowledge and wisdom of mm -hmm. how to manage it, because it's a great way to start establishing credit. We know in this country, you know, we really need to have a good credit, right. right? So we understand that. So I would say as a student, if you do have a credit card, make sure that as you're charging and using that credit card, you have the ability to pay it. That's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Know that plastic is not free. So you're going to need to be able to pay your credit card at the end of that particular month. Manage and watch your limits. I would encourage them to read the terms and conditions, clearly understand <clears throat> what they are obligating themselves to so that they're not going into it blindly. So read your information, ask the questions, and know if you use it, you're going to need to pay it back. All right, very good. Chris Bridges is an author, writes on all things financial and about keeping our houses in order. Uh, thank you very much You're for coming. Welcome. Good to thank have you here. You. We do appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, Allison.